calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. Gardening with Tanya is proudly brought to you by Mon Exteriors. Go green and give back to the earth with worm farm and composting solutions. Stark Airs HydroCash. Carbon load your garden and retain moisture for your plants. Dual Power. Your trusted number one battery platform. And Brevecto. Fast, easy, long-lasting parasite protection. Good morning, you beautiful people. I'm really excited to be here this morning. In fact, look, look, I got goosies. Look, look, look. Goosies, goosies. Hunner place. <laughs> Guys, um, it's going to be a really, really, really busy hour. So those of you who are able to join us live right now that are watching, I see you there. Joan, Lavelle, Alida, Liz, Jean, Rieta, Jenny, thank you so much for joining us. And for those of you that are going to be watching later, um, and that have now just clicked on, it's about nine, the kids have gone to bed, dinner's been served, you know, dishes washed, and you've got a bit of me time, then do enjoy this next hour with us. Uh, guys, it's a Thursday, and today we are talking giving back to your garden. Um, but before we get on to what we're doing today, um, we're going to talk about the dirty spade. Now, yes, the dirty spade. So what is the dirty spade? Guys, it's something new that we've introduced and it's where we get to see what you're doing in your garden. Yeah, what are you doing? What you and your family are about. And last week we spoke family gardening and we gave you all sorts of ideas from dinosaurs and Tinkerbell and Frozen and what was the other one? The Little Mermaid. You know, I'm very out of touch with these things. I'd rather talk the Lone Ranger. Yeah, that was my favorite one. You know, we didn't have all those fancy things. But anyway, there are all sorts of ways that we can get kids and, and our family involved. And when I talk family, I even talk your other half, like the one that might be glued to the couch with the remote control on certain super sport channels. Oh, did I say that? Oh, naughty, naughty, naughty. So um, there are many, many different ways, but we've had a flood of, of people sending through their messages, their pictures, their videos. Um, and remember with the Dirty Spade, whatever the topic is this week, we've got something up for you to go and do. And I want to see what you're doing because that's what it's all about, you know. It's not only about me being here, it's about seeing how you interact with your gardens and, and what you do. And guys, don't be scared. There's never a right way, there's never a wrong way, there's only your way. Yes. Um, so the winner of the Dirty Spade, remember, gets a 650 Rand gift voucher to my online shop. Um, tanyafissa.com um, and there you can get all your gardening goodies um, for everyone uh, yeah young old intermediate advanced like I really know everything okay so um, guys let's take a look at, uh, at the entries that we got in last week um, for the dirty spade and remember that was about family gardening so here we go let's take a look the dirty spade guys so we had some entrance and it's 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 always so hard to have to choose you know but yeah I guess could we have three winners yeah I suppose one day we could oh absolutely one one week we could but this week in third place we've got Sahira Sadik um thank you so so much Sahira um as I run up for sending it in she says her little girl loves helping me in the garden look at that look at that no no look at it look it's like a little cute little monster 
um, and eating strawberries and lettuce. And I had to make very, very sure that she stayed away from my chilies. Well, I'm very, very glad that you did. But look at all that fruit. Look at those beautiful lychees. Um, and, and guys, this is the informative time. If we spend time with our families now, with our, our children, our grandchildren, our nieces and nephews, later in life, later on, when they have tall, turned into tall trees, they will find that and they will remember that and they will use it um, back in their own lives. Right, our next runner up is Alida Cronier Krauser. Um, and uh, this is an Afrikaans one, so guys, hang in there um, while this Roynek reads a bit of Afrikaans. She says, Hi Tanya, ons huisgesin is mal oor tuinmaak. My dochterkie het haar eie plante en het ook haar eie saad geplant. Tomatis, chilies en green pepper. Is there a green pepper? Groen pepper, daar ja, sy. Sy help my altyd baie graag in die tuin. Ons is bezig om plante uit die tuin te kweek en te verkoop. Isn't that wonderful? So not only are they using it in their own home, cooking with it, they're also using it as an extra income. There it is, guys. What do you do with 398 carrots that are already at the same time? There's only so much carrot puree that you can make or eating carrots. So, yeah, there, there are lots of ways. You know, within your community group, we've all got these WhatsApp groups. I mean, if I have to see another WhatsApp group, actually, sometimes I didn't even know I belonged to it. And I'm like, oh, look at this. This is new. Um, but... <laughs> it's it's crazy. So on your WhatsApp group, just go and, and hit them from the left and say, I've got um, 12 times carrots to sell, times 24. Mm, let them try and work that one out. And then they'll be phoning you and asking for one carrot. Never mind. But guys, this is what it's all about. Okay, and our winner for the Dirty Spade. Oh my gosh, this is really, really cute. Um, well done, uh, Gemma Dawn. Gemma Dawn, this is what her story is. And this is what we do on weekends. Myself and my kids spend time in the garden every chance we get. We live on a plant-based diet. Ooh, hi caramba. Okay, and growing our food is so exciting for them to see the seedlings grow into plants that we can pick and cook. My bigger boy, Riley, there he is. There's little Riley, I imagine. Yes, that's little Riley. Gets very involved in choosing the plants and helping me place them. And even more surprising is my little baby, Tay. Um, is so gentle. He loves making the holes and physically planting the baby plants himself with more skill than he should have. <laughs> we love the garden and love seeing what it is to give us and some attention and love um, and oh on a side note we even make sure to clean the tools after each session well well done uh Gemma Dawn to uh, Riley and to Tay uh, you're getting yourself a 650 rand voucher to tanyafissa.com thank you so much for sending in your pictures and keep up the good work because it's the doing that makes the difference yeah it's the doing that makes the difference. Okay, so that was the dirty spade. Hoorah. Am I, am I, I don't need to read any more Afrikaans, do I? Yeah, if you did laugh at me, guys, sitting at home, um, now that's okay. If you did laugh at me, I'll get you back another day. Um, let's see who's here this morning. Um, Mary Null is here from Camburg. Cam oh, Camburg. Oh, you're in the mountains. Man, it must be so green right now. Um, I know you've had a lot of rain. Farmer that we speak to up there says his cows were like nearly getting water wings. He thought he had to put them, uh, some, you know, those armbands on because, yeah, because the, the cows were like really, really battling. Um, but, yeah, you know what? We are the complaining if there's too much rain, if there's too little rain, if it's too hot, it's too cold. Hi, caramba. Anyway, Tace is on. Uh, Johan Panda Dupree. Hello, Alexis. Shady man. Shady man. Shady man, how's it going, dude? Who's the shady man? Come on, I want to see a picture of you. Dude, not, not just an S. What's that mean? When there's an orange S. I want to see your profile pic, shady man. Um, uh, Renesha, Catherine is on. Steph Green is on. Anita is there. Tanya, hello. Hello. Um... Susan LaRue, um, Tess Cadman, Laval Wright is there. Who else have we got on? Uh, chicken, chicken meat, she says. No, they're real, they're real vegans. They eat plants only. Yeah, I, I don't know how that, that's like, oh. Okay, forgive me if I do offend you, but 
but that's going to be a really tall order and a tall ask. There's nothing like a choppy, ne? A little choppy on a bra. And I claim fakey, that little fit that's on the side. You know, and it gets a bit crunchy. And then, yeah, of a vorsi. And then you bite the vorsi and it just drips. Oh! I think we're going to go to Braai. Ne? Braai and Levi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jenny, um, luckiest teacher to have a free period coinciding with my tonic top. Good on you. And if we overrun, just give the kids a, uh, just give them some homework to do or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jenny, Mariska, Melissa is here from Joburg. <laughs> oh, guys. Yes, this is it. This is it. So today, um, we're talking about giving back to your garden. And, um, and it, might sound, it might sound kind of twee, but it, it, today is all about giving back. And gardening has changed so much um, in, in the last five years, I'd say the movement started 10, 15 years ago, but it really has become top of mind. There are words that we often hear being bandied about like carbon. What's that? We hear sustainable. Yeah? We hear um, companion planting. We, we hear all these, these words being used. And they're not only used in those National Geographic programs that you watch now about a city in a really, really bad country uh, where they spew terrible things out into the, into the air. No, it, it's now spoken about in our level, our little bubble that we live in. Um, and those words are all about, in simple, in really simplistic terms, about giving back and, and making sure that we take care of our soil, of our environment, to make it better. Make it better for us? Yes, make it better for us. Because when we have happy plants um, and happy soil and a good environment, we're going to have more produce, we're going to have more bees and butterflies, we're going to have more flowers, um, we're going to have a garden that has less hojos. Yes, important stuff. Very important stuff. So, um, oh wait, we've got a comment here. <gasps> Gail, Gail, hello Gail. <gasps> That's my rose lady, Gail. Gail, I've got to tell you, actually, Gail, you, you're going to, um, I hope you're sitting down. Gail, are you paying attention? If you are sitting down, in fact, you're going to need to sit down for this one because you are not going to believe this. The other day, this is a true story, and if you want any verification for it, I'll send you some pictures. The other day, I went and bought not one, not two, not three, but 35, are you sitting down, roses, 35 roses to plant in my brother's garden. You'll be so proud of me. I gave myself a naughty badge here and here and here and here. Yes, 35 new roses in my brother's garden ready for open gardens. Um, when is open garden? Oh, she says she's sitting. <laughs> Gail, you rock my socks. Um, I can't wait. Um, um, after visiting Sean's garden in Underberg, I was completely inspired with his beautiful, tough, hardy panna roses, the colorscape roses. I really was. Um, yes, the tide has turned. It took you long enough to try and convert me. Well, look at you. Look at you. Um, ah! Gail does say, actually, what got me started on this rant is that um, she loved the March issue of The Gardener. Um, thank you, Gail. It's all about roses. It was all for you guys. Um, and uh, it, it, is, it is a really, really beautiful issue, if I might say so myself. Um, Nadine is here from Heidelberg. Maddie, hello Maddie. Nadine, um, gee whiskers, there are a lot of you guys on here today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Heidi Witt, PE, you're getting rain. Rain dance, rain dance. Fantastic. Gail, I'm waiting to see your comment. Gail. Oh, well done. Ha! Not a badge. Okay, right, guys. So let's get into giving back to your garden. Okay, so there are a couple of things. I'm not going to teach you rocket science this morning. I'm going to give you the stuff that really matters. The stuff that, that we have in our gardens, in and around us, mostly that is free. That is absolutely free. That we can truly make a difference to our soil um, and all those other factors, those four factors that I spoke about earlier. Okay, so how do we get it done? 
Number one, the most important thing, and this blows my mind because when we were able to travel um, pre-COVID, um, very often we'd go and see many, many, many gardens. Um, and, and in a young garden, this is a task that has to be done so, so important. It, it's critical that it gets done, especially in a young garden or whenever you are going to plant. And that is the task of mulching. Guys, mulching, I am blown away every time that I see or a picture gets sent to me and there's one plant. Ian Yanni Yammer, Da Sete, Any Day. Okay, one guy. And around it is Vustain. Just soil. Soil, soil, soil. Guys, we know. We've watched the programs. When there's just soil around, bare soil, what happens? Erosion. It goes down, it ends up in the sea, in the ocean. Okay? All the nutrients are washed, washed away. The topsoil is what we know this. I mean, I'm telling you stuff that you know. I'm just gently reminding you. Just a gentle, or maybe not so gentle. But anyway, it is mulching. Guys, what is mulching? Mulching is where you put a thick organic layer of product of anything on top of your soil. And if there's one garden task that you can do, and you kind of like just haven't been getting the hang of this thing or whatever, just, do, just mulch. Um, please, you will be amazed and astounded and you will turn your soil in, into something beautiful. So what do we use for mulch? Now, this can be quite controversial, but this is what we have done for years and years and years in this garden, in my garden, and that is lawn clippings. Now, people will say to me, oh, if you put lawn clippings around your plants, you are going to remove all the nitrogen from the soil. Well boys and girls. I'm very interested in this statement because in the Amazon jungle, you know, the leaves fall and green leaves fall too because we know that evergreen trees, they shed their leaves and they normally shed them in a green state. Yes, you've seen those evergreen trees. They're just green leaves all over. In the Amazon jungle, do you see someone with a blower or a rake raking up all the green leaves in case it takes all the nitrogen away from the soil? In fact, I've only seen it as a perfect environment. So taking green lawn clippings and placing them as a mulch around your plants is one way that you can mulch. Of course, if you don't feel comfortable with that, oh, and remember, just by the way, I'm telling you to do this if you have not let your weeds set seed. Because if your weeds have set seed and you then cut and you take this and it's got weed seeds in it, and you put it on top of your flower bed, well, you know what's going to happen there, hey? Yes, you don't, know, you don't need to work that one out. They are going to germinate. So um, if you are not cutting weed seeds um, or the seeds of the lawn, so in other words, if you haven't let your lawn get too long um, and the weed seeds are there, especially like kukuyu, which we don't want to go all over because kukuyu is very, very, very... Ad what's the word? It's... um. It's, uh, it's ADHD, yes, kukuyu. Kukuyu grows wild. So you would put this on, all right, a nice layer, about two centimeters thick. Um, the only word of caution that I would give you is that if you are putting green and the next week you go and put some more green on top, please don't make your layers too thick. Rather than work in different areas of the garden, um, because you're not going to have that much. Uh, what we also do is if we've got too much, um, we then take it, and we simply just add it to the compost heap. Or we've got a black bin, um, like one of those dustbins, yeah? And we just throw it in there, put the lid on, and my, does composting happen. <laughs> put your head in there and take a sniff, and you'll be goofed for one week. True story. <laughs> um, guys, the reason why I don't want you to pile up um, the green uh, leaves too much, because sometimes when it starts drying out, it actually forms like a thick mat that when you water the water actually battles to get through it. Um, but I'm going to give you some, some tips on, on how to mulch and how not to mulch in, in a few seconds, which will deal with this. Okay, so that's lawn clippings. That's number one, guys. We all have it. It's brilliant. Don't put it in a bag and pay someone to take it away. Please, it is ridiculous. Um, uh, absolutely ridiculous. The other thing that we can use as mulch, which has become really popular, and I love them, um, 
here are beautiful macadamia nut shells. Look at that. Um, you know, I guess they didn't have a use for them. Well, us gardeners, of course, have found a good use for them. Uh, they don't break down as quickly. Um, in fact, they take years and years and years to compost. So using it as a beautiful layer um, of mulch works pretty well. And it's quite decorative as well. Um, interestingly enough, my little boy Rolo um, loves climbing into the pots, taking out the macadamia nut shell and then eating it. And he gets it stuck right there in his mouth. And then I've got to actually pull the nut out of his teeth. But never mind, um, he's still fine. Um, so macadamia nut shells work fantastically well as well. Um, of course, the other types of mulch that you can use is things that we all have in and around. This here, um, we had cut down a few branches and we put them through the shredder. Now, guys, you just got to have a shredder. Uh, I don't care what public holiday is or if you've had your birthday, you just make it up, decide, just tell everybody that you're having your birthday and that you only want cash um, because then you can go and buy yourself a shredder. Uh, unbelievable. This was actually a branch from a yellowwood tree and um, it was too low. So we cut it and we put it through our shredder and we got this beautiful stuff out. I and mean, look at that. Um, and this goes onto the garden beds. Um, I've just ripped out the front of the garden bed, my whole front garden, true story, my whole front garden. Um, and so I've got individual plants with a lot of soil around. So what have I been putting? I've been putting down the mulch. Now, at this juncture, I have to tell you something. Because you see, you see that this here, it's made lovely little sticks. Okay. So you know what dogs are like? When there's a stick, they will take the stick and they will eat it. Well, ours do, Gracie in particular. So uh, last weekend she was um, in the garden where we were busy working and we had the mulch down and we really didn't pay much attention to it because she was like chewing on the sticks and chewing on the sticks and chewing on the sticks. Well, later that night did we certainly know um, what the story was because there was projectile vomiting. And I mean projectile. Um, out came sticks. Um, a bit of sand, um, a bit of things. And the interesting thing is we'd added nothing else to, to the top of that soil. So it was simply the sticks that she'd been eating. In her very excited state, she ate too many. But, uh, yeah, we all care about our kids, hey? We, we really, really do. Um, so anyway, that was off to the vet. Hot past four in the morning. Um, yeah, it wasn't very pretty. But, uh, but talking about kids and summer and ticks and fleas, which is something that we always worry about. I mean, we... We stress about that because those ticks are so small. They're so small. And here in our garden, they run on the lawn, they're in the long grass, they go for walks with us. And what happens? You don't know. You don't know if they've picked anything up. And mites. What are mites? Mites are those things that grow by their ears. It's horrible. And when their dogs start scratching their ears, I mean, you hear that squishy, squishy sound, that's also mites. But never mind. Um, this is what we use for our kids. And our kids are on this. It's called Brevecto, guys. And um, you can get it either in a tasty treat. In fact, I'm going to open one up here. Um, I'm not going to eat it. I promise you I'm not going to eat it. Um, but it comes like this. Have a look here. If I can just see if you had nails, you could open things like this. But I think I garden too much, so I don't really have nails. Um, but you can open this up, and I'll show you the little treat. Bottom line is, um, Brevecto in this little treat, and you get it for smaller dogs or big dogs. Of course, ours are all the kind of smaller size. Um, and they really, they, they eat it. They, they just munch it up because it's, yeah, yeah, it's kind of meaty. Um, so they can have this or they can have the spot on, um, which will last three months. Um, you, the spot on will actually last a bit longer. And basically it starts working within two hours and you know that your dogs are going to be tick, flea and mite free. There's also one for cats. Um, and then there's a Brevecta Plus for uh, worms and cats as well. So, yeah, there it is. This is what we give our kids because at least I know. I don't have to have, um, I know that my vet reminds me when I need to be able to give it to them again because we forget. Now, Bahari, uh, um, we're going to test this one out. Bahari, come here. Bahari, come here. Bahari is, um, is Ash's dog. She, um, she lives on the property at the top and Bahari is our, um, is the, come, come, my Baba. Come, come, 
come Bahari. Bahari is, um, the, the, she's the dog for everyone. She's a rescue greyhound. Look at, oh you shy my bubba. She's not normally like this, trust me, she's wild. She is wild. Her and Rolo are BFFs. And yes, she was a rescue kid and has the life of Riley now. She goes on night runs. Um, she goes on long walks. And she's Rolo's BFF. And she climbs on my lap like, like a Yorkie because she wants attention. And you want to eat some Brevecto? Yeah? You want to taste that? You want to taste it? No? Yes? Come. Here we go. Have it, Baba. There we go. You want it? No, not today. I'm very shy. She's sleeping. Look at that stretch, dude. <laughs> okay, Baba. Uh, you want to stay here, Mummy? You want to stay here? When she arrived in our family, she was thin, 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 and she had scars all over her. Um, but let me tell you, this is not what she's... Uh, Bari, are you awake, sunshine? Hello. And she smiles. She gives you the smile. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, pumpkin, I'm going to leave it there. See if you want to eat some. All right, guys, so that's what we do to make sure that we are taking care of our kids. And that's the way it works. So uh, don't let them eat the sticks, um, which ours did. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I see there's some questions coming through, but we're going to get to those in a second. Um, oh, I'm told I got five minutes left. Ah, ah. I think you must go and fetch Rolo because then um, Bahari will wake up a bit. Okay. Right. Okay. Someone else is going to take over duty with the flag that I should be look. What screen I should be pointing at? Okay. But never mind. Let's get on to the other forms of mulching. Other forms of mulching are leaves. It's coming up to that time of the year, guys, when the leaves are going to start falling. Your deciduous trees, your autumn leaves, I love it. It is the time when I am literally like a womble. We try and get as many of the leaves as possible. We collect, we collect, we collect. We put them into black bags. We have many uses for them. We make leaf mold. We add them to the compost. We also get them to break down by either riding over them with the lawnmower to use as a mulch. Okay, you're yeah, riding over them with a lawnmower. It's the best fun. It's the best fun. Um, it works incredibly well. Okay, hold on. Are the kids coming? Come here, my boy. Come here. Come here. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello. 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 Give the smile. Give the smile. Hello. Come here, boy. Come here. Come here. You have guys haven't seen Rolo in a while. Look at the child. Look how grown up I am. Look how grown up I am. Look. Kiss, kiss the camera. Kiss the camera. Kiss. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, he's, he's my brown, he's my brown out boy. Um, and uh, he loves, he loves, he loves, he loves. There's his best friend. There. Kisses my boy. What you smelling? What you smelling? There we go. There we go. You see? You see? That's how it's done. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, so no, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my good boy. Um, folks, yeah, oh, they, they steal your heart, say. So. Okay, go play. Go play, kids. You want more? No, I, I know you've, you've had your brevector. You can't have any more. Okay, all righty. Anyway, let's get back to the leaves. Gosh, I'm going all over the place this morning. Okay, the kids are being well behaved. So, leaves. Yes, many uses for them. You can make leaf mold. You can put them um, on your compost heap, put them into black bags. Um, but yes, I know it becomes a bit of a story, like raking and raking and raking and raking. Um, and <laughs> there are better ways to do it, guys. There really, really, really are better ways to do it. So um, what I would recommend, um, and this is what we use, um, well, we use a cordless, cordless battery-operated blower and let me tell you um, we've recently been testing this guy out over here take a look here mace here's the um let's just show them this first this is the lithium ion battery okay now the interesting thing is this lithium ion battery of the power plus range um it works on all their tools so whether you've got the blower whether you've got in fact even a drill or a skill saw um or a vacuum cleaner and um, they work on this range the power plus range so it, it's interchangeable. It's one battery fits all products, which means you've got one charger, which is great. You know, you're getting the 20 volt 
or in the 40 volt, um, you can get a blower only, you can get a blower and a vacuum, blower and a vacuum, yes, um, or just the vacuum operation. But this does the job, it makes dealing with leaves like this. We've just popped some here in the studio to show you how it works. This is the, um, the bag, which is a 45 litre capacity, um, because as it vacuums, it also shreds, okay, it shreds the leaves, puts them into here. All you gotta do is simply unzip it and open it up and then empty that onto your compost heap, or even better, around your garden as a mulch. You see where I'm going, okay, guys? We gotta make it simple. Like, if you've got to rake it and rake it and rake it, you're not going to want to do it. It's like such a hack. Um, so we want to make it easier. But anyway, so we tried this little baby out um, just on the blowing function. But remember, it is, of course, also the vacuum. So it can vacuum and shred at the same time. And to do that, to attach the vacuum part, all you've got to do is unscrew this guy over here. All right. I'll just show you here very, very quickly. You unscrew this guy here. Okay, there it is. Okay, unscrew that guy, that flips there, and then you attach the vacuum part onto it, all right? So nice and easy, guys, really nice and easy. But today we want to show you how the little guy works. So we've got the battery, um, slide out the battery, uh, lithium-ion battery, which means that you can never overcharge it. It's a quick charge, so it doesn't take hours and hours and hours. And remember, of course, it's interchangeable with all the other products. You can check this out on KLB dot co dot za um, check out the link um, that you should see on screen as i'm chatting about it um, and this comes with a three-year warranty the power plus range as i said comes with whether it's a drill whether it's a vacuum cleaner uh, whether it is a what else have they got a chainsaw even a battery operated chainsaw okay so all we're going to do is take this baby we're going to clip them in here do you see there it goes that's where your battery goes in over there so we take it in clip it in here Okay, there it goes, and you've got various settings on here, so you can go from a, from low, there's your, there we go, four, three, two, one, or you can go on to max, of course, I will go to max. <laughs> okay, your on and off button, uh, you've also got a switch that can then keep it on your function that you've selected. So, let's get these out the way, and uh, bottom line is, make gardening fun, and uh, the way that we make gardening fun is very, very simply like this. So let's get this guy clicked in. There we go. And I've got to close this as a safety feature. So close them up. There we go. And let's see. So when it starts off, can you hear that? It's like, it sounds like it's quite slow, doesn't it? Listen, listen again. Just come closer, listen. Okay, it sounds like a good engine starting up. Wait till it gets going, um, because it works at just under 100 decibels. <laughs> Do I love making a mess. You should just see the faces of the people behind the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Karamba. <laughs> uh, guys, it's also known to use to do as um, blow waves um, for, uh, for dogs and pets. Um, no, kidding. Uh, once you've had a cordless gardening tool or accessory, you will wonder what you were thinking all those years back because that is the difference that it makes. You will want to vacuum and blow everything. Um, guys, take a look at the video that's coming up now. Um, we're going to talk a bit more afterwards about mulches and I know there are lots of questions. I've seen them all coming through and how to give back to your garden but I'm going to touch on that after you've watched this clip because this is a sure way, a proven way of giving back to your garden which is giving back to your soil. Today we're talking about a revolutionary product which has been made available to us gardeners which farmers have been using for many, many years. What it is, it's called Humigrow. Now Humigrow is from Ledonite deposits. Now what does that mean? It basically means it's a form of carbon that's been made available 
to us. Now, carbon is the basic building block of anything. And now we have it available to you as a gardener. For me, that makes me really excited because looking at South African soils, many, many of them are depleted, lacking in the basic elements. These days, with the onset of granular fertilizers, we've kind of just become stuck in that rut of how to feed your plants. But we've got to remember, if we get the soil layer right, the rest looks after itself. So Humigrow being your basic form of carbon works like this. Take a look at these little boys. So it comes with a little wooden spoon. One teaspoon of your spoon is five grams, which is the basic measurement that we've allowed for you to mix it into water. So take a look at these little boys. These are them here. Nice and small, very, very compact. And to show you how it works is to take one teaspoon, pop it into this because I want to show you how quickly it becomes available. So as I'm busy stirring, you will immediately see the water's changing color. Aha, which means liquid form, carbon now available to our garden. What does that do for my garden? Well, number one is when you're adding carbon, you're building soil. When you're building soil, you're doing a couple of things. Number one is you're gonna make the nutrients that are available in the soil or just sitting in that soil more readily available to your plants. Also, it's going to improve the structure of your soil. So when we've got improved structure, ha, huh, what does that mean? That means I've got better water holding capacity. That means my plants aren't gonna dry out and get stressed out during either very, very hot days or very, very cool days. It also means that my porosity is going to be better. That means the air available in the soil. So it's not gonna be a compacted soil. This, of course, all takes time. As a good farmer will tell you, it takes many, many years to fix the soil. And something I read the other day, which really is important, is leave the soil in a better state than when you first found it. And that's exactly what we're gonna do when we're using something like Humigrow. There are various ways of applying it. Number one, you can apply it into a watering can. So you mix either one sachet, and one of these guys, you're getting three little sachets, so it's for three applications. Five grams, which is one teaspoon, into five liters of water. Mix it up and you can apply that as a drench directly to your garden. What can you apply to? Anything where you want to improve the soil. But directly to your bedding plants, onto your lawn, into containers, into your garden beds, anything you simply want. The other way that you can apply it is by mixing it in with a granular fertilizer. So it's 50 grams of Humigrow per kg of fertilizer. Simply mix that in and then apply your organic granular fertilizer just as normal. The next way that you can add it into your soil, especially when doing container gardening, is mixing it in with your potting soil. So the same rules apply as you were doing it. It's five grams into five liters of product. All right, so that would be potting soil. Pop it in, mix it all in well, and off you go. Of course, that can also be used for your compost when composting your garden. So remember guys, Humigrow is incredibly safe for your garden. It's safe for you and it's safe for your fur kids, it's safe for the ladybirds, for the butterflies, for all the good things that we want in our gardens because those are the beneficial things. We don't want to harm bees because they are really important. None of this product can ever ever harm it. In fact, it's so harmless, it's good enough to take a swig of. <laughs>
The other thing I want to quickly, quickly touch on is one of the miracle plants. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to mulch. And, and the reason why I'm, I'm cutting to this now is because it's going to come in when I'm showing you what to do. So this is comfrey, guys. Um, it's a, a bit of an unruly plant. It's really quite excitable. Uh, once you've got one plant, you'll never need to buy another one because it divides, it multiplies as a true perennial. The, the, the leaves at the bottom always start getting a bit manky like this, but it's fine. You break them off and you use them. Um, how do you use them in your garden? Well, there's several ways. So, um, and why is it important? Well, comfrey is very, very high in nitrogen, exceptionally high in nitrogen. Now, to make things quicker and easier, what you do is you add, just cut up bits like this, okay, of your comfrey. Of course, you can always just tear it apart, but you do this. So you can make comfrey tea. Um, you can add comfrey in your soil when you're planting. Really? Yeah. So you take a leaf like this, um, at the bottom of your planting hole, you add green comfrey leaves like this. They, because they're high in nitrogen, they break down really, really quickly. They release a lot of micronutrients, which is so important to the plants that you're planting on top. Interesting that. Um, so, of course, there are all sorts of healing aspects of comfrey as well, but we're not going to go into that. But tearing it up like this, and what do you do with it? Okay, well, yeah, I'm cutting all this up. And um, so preparing a planting hole, just have some of this. And when you're planting in the garden, you've dug the hole, place some of this at the bottom of the hole. Just like that. So it's quite, it's much easier to work with. Um, oh, I missed that one. <laughs> so take a handful like this, pop it at the bottom of the planting hole together with your organic fertilizer and away you go. You are simply just giving back. You're adding. What would have happened to this? It would have gone into the compost heap or maybe into one of those bags to get taken away by someone. No, guys, this you must use. And they are beautiful. The comfrey when it flowers is lovely. You get a pink, you get a lilac, and there's also a white. So if you can get hold of the white, ooh, stick with it, baby, because it's fantastic. Um, so that is another way. Of course, the other way that you can do, um, that you can use comfrey, is simply by taking it like this um, and placing it around plants. So I'm going to show you how to use mulch. And this is all going to come together now. You think I'm jumping around a bit, but that's okay. So let's pretend that this is our garden bed, okay? This is our garden bed, and we're going to be planting some beautiful little Diantha Sheba. And this is what I see off happening so, so often in gardens. Right, so of course we've got a bit of soil in our garden bed. So let's just add a little bit of soil here, okay? So there we've got a bit of soil in our garden bed, okay? And... So what you can do is you can take your comfrey leaves and you can put them down like that. Literally just like that. And then you're going to plant your plants on top of this. Okay, so we can do that. So there you go. You would then take your little dianthus. Remember when you take it out, you pop it like that. Okay, pop out your little dianthus. And you would put it right there. Okay, and then you would put your remaining soil around. Easy and simple. Of course, we could have taken it like this which are just the leaves, and we could have sprinkled the leaves at the base. Okay, now I'm going to show you one further thing that you can do. Um, and this we have used in the garden. In fact, we planted some proteas in a section of the garden that we hardly ever go to. And, and like hardly ever go to, like, I mean hardly. Um, and we planted um, our proteas using this product here, which is called HydroCash. Well, what does HydroCash do? Mm. HydroCash is a water retaining gel. And we often see this. We often, often see that we've planted something. My goodness, all it does is it droops, it droops, it droops, because it's still trying to send out its fine little roots, and it doesn't get enough moisture. So what we do is we added this. Now, HydroCash you can add in different ways. So it's a water absorbing gel. Now, I want to dry this. Um, this teaspoon. So there are various ways that you can add it. You can add it to the soil simply like this by sprinkling a bit on the surface. Okay, one gram will be suitable. I mean, five grams will be suitable for any small to medium sized plant. And I'm talking five liters of product. So it really goes a long, long way. So take it like this, you can apply it dry. Okay, when you apply it dry, Obviously, at the bottom of your planting hole, you're then just going to mix it in. When you've mixed it in, 
okay? And then you add water, this is what happens. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to show you right here in this little glass. So here's one teaspoon, pop it in, and these little, these little granules ah, ah, start swelling. And you'll see, that's why you need so very, very little. You really don't need a lot of this. Because for a large shrub, it'll say to you here, you use five grams, five to a hundred grams per square meter. Five grams per square meter. That is hardly anything, guys. Um, we use it in all our potting soils that we're mixing before we plant in hanging baskets. We use it when we're prepping gardens or up areas for planting like our little annuals because what it does is it retains the moisture. This is giving back. Okay, so watch what happens here. Um, we let it settle for a little bit. Ooh, okay, and look what's happening. It's turning. It is absorbing all the water. Oh, there we go. There are the little granules. There they are, but they are absorbing all the water. So when your plant there needs the water, okay, when they need it, its little roots are sitting there, it then takes the water from these little granules, these little polymers, that's the, the fancy name for them, but let's just talk about them as little, little granules, okay? The fine root hairs will then absorb the water from, uh, and the capillaries literally from here, and give your plant the available moisture that it needs. Especially while we're at work or busy, or we've just forgotten, which happens. So look what's happened. The teaspoon is now standing straight up, it has absorbed all that water, and that's what it does. So if I had to add a little bit of water to this over here, let's add a bit of water, okay? And you're going to see, as we've added the water, so the gel is going to start grabbing the water, holding it, and that's what we want. And that happens at the bottom, in the soil. Um, it's brilliant. Getting back to my um, proteas, since we planted them, we planted them with three handfuls of this, three handfuls of hydrocash in the bottom of each hole. And we put the protea plant on top of that. We have not had to water, true story, for nine months. We have not watered them once. They got planted and they were left. And often maybe you would think, well, I wonder how little seedlings of pine trees or eucalyptus trees manage to survive in the forests when they planted out as little trees like this. They're not watered. They put out there, they planted, and the rest is, whatever water they get is from the sky. What do they use? This is actually the product that they use. They use hydrocash at the bottom of the planting hole. So whenever you're planting a tree, seedlings, whatever, this is the stuff to use. All right, but let's get back to how we are mulching. So we've got our hydrocash in there. We can put our comfrey leaf in there, and then we're going to put our little dianthus on top there. But what I want to show you with mulching is the following. So let's just pretend that we've got them here. Let's just pretend that we've got them there in our garden, okay? And then we've got our soil in between. So let's just pop that over there. Okay, nice and easy. Alrighty. Okay, now, this, this here is what a typical garden bed will look like once you've finished. Yep, there's going to be bare soil and your little plants. Hmm, okay. Not quite in a straight row there, Tanya. Let's get this right. Okay, there we go. So that's what your garden beds are going to look like. Is this right? No, 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 no. This is where we want to add the mulch because what's going to happen is the sun's going to beat down. It's going to draw all this nutrition, all the water straight out of the soil, dry these little plants up so quickly, and they are going to in turn suffer. So what we do is we use mulch, whether we're using our sticks, because when putting a layer of mulch on, what do you do? You're keeping the moisture trapped. You're adding organic content to the soil when this starts breaking down. Because there's no light, if there were any weed seeds in here, they would not germinate, guys. They wouldn't. Isn't that a blessing? Ha! Huh, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Um, of course, I could use my grass clippings around it. And when you are mulching, one word of caution, though. Please take note. Note that I'm not doing that. Can you see that? I'm not doing that right up to the stem. I have done it just away, slightly away. All right, slightly away so that I'm not 
right against the stem of the plant because with this moisture right against the stem it can sometimes cause rotting so especially if you're using a wet product um, don't put it right up close but that is mulching i call it much more mulch because folks by doing that you are doing one of the best things that you can ever 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 give back to your garden um, so so important and so critical okay other ways of giving back to your garden remember guys i talk about organic plant foods use organic plant foods when you're using organic plant foods you are giving back to the garden in the right format so you as you're adding it, you're adding good micro, macronutrients. This is a plant growth regulator. It's pure seaweed extract. Um, colors vary in the bottle. Well, that's because it's made from proper seaweed. Yeah, like proper, proper seaweed. Um, use it on seedlings, hanging baskets, um, feeding your plants like this. And remember, if it's organic, it's going to be really, really good. Okay, try and stick with that, please. Okay, and one of the most important, important parts, let's put my little dianthus away, of giving back to your garden is, of course, composting. Now, guys, don't roll your eyes. Don't roll your eyes. Because I know a lot of you say, oh, I don't have enough space to have a compost heap. Or the rodents are going to come. Oh, bollocks. Absolute rubbish. Composting has come long, long and far on its journey and has become nice and sophisticated so that we can have it whether we live in a townhouse, whether we live in a huge farm, and depending on the scale, we can have something for our own homes. Um, one which we found um, last year, in fact, last year, did I just say? Last year, 2020. Yes, what a year. Last year, we came across this guy. Um, and this is, it's, it's a monster. It's fabulous. It's a 70 litre tumbling composter. Um, well, so you can see it's not very big. It's nice and compact. It's got legs so it could live in your garage. Um, it could also live uh, just outside your back door, depending on food scraps or your main source of putting into your composter. Composting can be done. Please don't give me the excuse that, oh, Yes, well, I don't have enough space. And if you're worried about the rats, look at this. She's rat proof because it is sealed. Okay. It's made of uh, UV stabilized recycled plastic. Big words. Bottom line is <laughs> thought has gone into the production of this and the rats aren't going to get in it. Okay. So how do you use it? Well, very simply, it's got an opening here. All right. Come in, Mace. Can you come in and have a look here? Mason's about to trip over some compost, but it's okay. Come closer. There we go. Um, it's got a slat over here, so you open it up. Pop everything you want inside here. Um, close it up, all right? When you are adding things into it, and um, you've actually added some weight in here, it's going to want to fall. So you've got this little guy here that grips it so that it doesn't move. You see that? Okay. So ungrip it, and then you can tumble it. So there's always the fact that people say, well, how often must I turn my compost heap? Well, yes, you do need to turn it. You should be turning it every month or so. <gasps> You're kidding me. Every month I've got to get in there and turn that big compost heap. That compost heap that's like 10 meters high and 3 meters wide. Yes, because we make the fatal mistake of saying, let's just make the compost heap down there at the bottom end of the garden. And the next thing, you've got to hire a three-ton truck or a fenter trailer one weekend to get rid of the stuff because it's become a mountain. It's like you go around the corner and you're like, oh my God, where did that come from? And it does, it happens overnight. Um, and there's several reasons for that. One, because we're not managing it properly. Um, we are putting large sticks onto the compost heap instead of cutting them and breaking them down into bite-sized chunks. Remember, the quicker we break it down, uh, the smaller the chunks, the quicker we can break it down, which is why I've said to you, you've got to get that shredder, guys. You've got to get that shredder for, uh, for your birthday, Christmas, past Women's Day, whatever it is. So cut the things up as small as you can, please, to put inside your composter. Uh, it's kind of logical, all right? So don't go putting big branches on. It ain't going to do the job. It really ain't. Um, so in something like this, how would we get started? Um, guys, it's very, very simple. And remember, if you don't want to get something like this and you're needing something bigger, well, there are 240-litre composters that you can get. 
Um, you can make your own by using some pellets. Uh, works incredibly well. Uh, remember, a compost is all about the ratio between green and brown. Okay, that's important, green and brown. So the average is like this. You want two parts, two parts brown to one part green. Okay, so what is brown? Well, brown's like this. Okay, that's brown. Okay, brown leaves. Where are my leaves? Here, brown leaves. That's brown. Okay, if you had to take your lawn clippings and <clears throat> put them in a grain bag and let them dry out and turn brown, that is brown. This is green. Generally, one of the biggest mistakes we make in composting is by adding too much green. That's when your compost heap gets smelly. Mmm, smelly and slimy. Ew, that's when you open it and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa science experiment. Okay, and that's what, that's what chases us away from it. So if your compost heap is like that, then all you've got to do is just add more brown. More brown can be also added in the form of cardboard. Okay, just tear up bits of cardboard and add that to your compost heap. That is adding brown. So there are various ways that we can do that, but all you've got to think of constantly is what is that ratio. Okay, once you've added all these bits inside here, okay, once you've added all your bits inside your beautiful tumbling composter or into your layers of your static compost heap, then you let nature take charge. And nature takes charge by the heat that is in here, the heat, the air, because they're air pockets. And remember, for anything to be able to start composting, it also needs the air. Very, very important. And that's why when you are tumbling it like this, that happens and you aid the composting process. So, let's get back to once you have it there. You've got everything in, you've made your layers. What can you do to speed it up? So, you saw me cutting up my comfrey leaves. Take your comfrey leaves, cut them up, add a wee bit of water to it. I had a watering can around here somewhere. Add a wee bit of water. If you can, let it sit like this for a good few days. Oh, put a lid on it, okay? Put a lid on it, if you've got the time. Put a lid on it, leave it for a good few days. Take this and add that to your compost heap. My, 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 the high amount of nitrogen in here, kind of like, it's just like a rocket. It kickstarts your compost heap. It really kickstarts it into starting that composting process. Of course, the other thing that you can do is you can get compost activator. Now, compost activate is basically good hojos, um, good, it's like yeast. You add this to some tepid water um, and then you pour it onto your compost heap, okay? And that will help you create good compost within six to eight weeks. You're saying to me, Tanya, six to eight weeks? True story, because let me show you this. This was taken out of our compost heap this morning. Come in close here, Mace. Look at this beautiful stuff taken out of the compost heap. You can see all sorts have gone in here. Um, this is all leftovers from the garden. There are even a few bit of sticks, but ma, this is food for the garden. Absolute goodness. So very, very quickly, what can you add and what can't you, can't you add to your compost heap? Okay, very, very quickly, have a Tupperware like this. This comes from our kitchen. Um, as we're cooking and preparing meals, so we throw some into here and into another Tupperware, and those are for the worms. For the compost heap, this is what it is. It's eggshells, okay? It's tea bags. It's, oh, what are these things? Potato peels. The ends of tomatoes, but I do have an argument about this because I need to always keep some for the chickens and some for the compost. So uh, one will go there and one will go there. All right, um, any paper, any brown paper, uh, manky cabbage, Banana peel, a um, bit of leftover spinach. Remember, compost heaps are true vegetarians. So don't go adding your leftover yogurt and that. That's for the bokashi. Remember, we spoke about that last week or the week before. So that is what bokashi is used for. Um, there is no way that we should be having any leftovers. Any leftovers or any waste because between bokashi, worm farming and your composter, folks, You've got it all. You've got vermi tea. You're going to have bokashi tea and you're going to have this beautiful friable compost um, that you can give back to your garden. That's alive. That is full of nutrients. Um, if you haven't made one, go out there today and start. Um, 
What's stopping you? What's stopping you? Talking about what's stopping you guys, um, those are a couple of ways that we can give back to your garden. But right now, I want to make sure that you are geared up for the weekend. So here are your weekend tasks coming straight from The Gardener and Detainee magazines. guys and last up clear the deck the best part of my job is getting to clear the deck and um, guys remember our magazines are on sale now thank you to all of you who have been supporting us um, over the last year and in fact over the last 15 years yeah it's about that long that we've been going um, we appreciate you we love your feedback uh, we love your interaction and your letters um, and we thank you so so much but most importantly this is our beautiful March issue. Isn't she a stunner? This is Detainee and the Gardener. It's a rose Arctic, it's a rose magazine inspired by Ludwig Taschner, who celebrates um, being in the gardening business for over 70 years. Guys, they are top of the pops. Um, we visit a beautiful garden in Underberg, the guy that inspired me to plant 35 roses. Um, there's what to do in the garden now, as you saw on Jobs for the Weekend. But before you delve into that, also keep an eye out for our brand new, brand new Grow to Eat magazine. Guys, Grow to Eat magazine, we know you love it, so we've given it a bit of a pimp. Um, it's now 96 pages, full of your veggie, yummy recipes and awesome veggies that you can use in your garden. Guys, there are beautiful recipes in here. Also, we've made it a bit of a journal. So... What it says is that we can give you space where you can write and say that I harvested. We want you to track your things. Besides the moon calendar, we want you to be able to track with your Grow to Eat magazine what I can plant, what have I planted, and make your own notes. Make your lists right here in this book because I want your Grow to Eat to be your best companion in the veggie and herb garden. It's got to get full of mud. It's got to get some dog ears where you made your notes um, and keep it as your best companion. We're so very, very proud of Grow to Eat magazine. And someone's phone is going, is that mine? Oh, someone's phone is ringing. Uh oh, everyone around the drinks. Ooh. <laughs> Listen to the tech team. Okay, I am nailed. Guys, anyway. Please, if you want to find out where to find Grow to Eat magazine or The Gardener or Detainee, pop onto our website, um, that's thegardener.co.za, and you can find a retailer where our magazine is stocked, or just phone our offices. Um, guys, a huge, a huge shout out to our sponsors. Uh, thank you, Stark Airs, Mon Exteriors uh, for the amazing composter, MSD Animal Health for the Brevecto for my kids, and KLB for the dual-powered blower and shredder. Guys, vacuumer. Um, it's been a wonderful hour. I know we've gone over it a little bit, um, but, but thank you. Uh, thanks for staying with us. Uh, remember to get out there and get your latest issues of The Gardener, Detainee and Grow to Eat magazines. And I can't wait to see you in two weeks time. All your questions, guys, by the way, that we haven't been able to get to. Coffee grinds, yes, uh, you can use coffee grinds in your compost heap, um, but all the questions that we haven't got to, we will answer them in the course later this afternoon. Once, apparently I've cleaned up my mess. Mwah! God bless you and yours. Take care of yourself, most importantly, and happy gardening. Cheers for now. Mwah! Bye. Gardening with Tanya was proudly brought to you by Mon Exteriors. Go green and give back to the earth with worm farm and composting solutions. Stark Airs Hydro Cash. Carbon load your garden and retain moisture for your plants. Dual Power, your trusted number one battery platform. And Brevecto, fast, easy, long-lasting parasite protection. 
calling all green fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands on practical advice, and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.